الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ومن يضلل ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في الكتاب الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به الارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا i begin with the praise of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I thank Allah for giving us this beautiful religion of ours. I thank Allah for all the bounties that he has bestowed upon us. I thank Allah for sending our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the seal of the prophet to us and making us his ummah. I thank Allah for giving us beautiful families. this community i can go on and on and on for what we should be thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for just a few weeks ago we had the best month of the year the month of ramadan in which we all came together and we made sujood we prayed together we did sajda together we did tahajjud together we did everything may allah accept all of our ibadah for that beautiful month of ramadan and may allah bless us with another month inshallah next year and the year after and the year after because nobody knows when life will end having said that I think it's critical it's important that the month of Ramadan is only the beginning that we should consider. It should begin for us to a journey for the rest of the year. And alhamdulillah in this country that we are in we need to show to our children how to practice the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's our duty my beloved brothers and sisters i stand before you very sad to relate to a very tragic event an incident that happened in the community that i used to be in in northern virginia the community of adam center where on the 18th of june the 23rd day of ramadan this young girl sister nabra was brutally murdered by this very gruesome act by this drunken person who was very angry this happened when a group of 17 teenage children were praying tahajjud at the masjid adam center and they decided to go walk to a nearest restaurant to have sahur and it happened on the way back today our hearts goes out to her family may allah bless her and give her jannah inshallah May Allah give sabr to her family because it is indeed a tragic event. My beloved brothers and sisters, I stand before you, just like Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam have taught us that when something like this happen in the a tragedy that happened, we should put our minds together and we should evaluate what has happened and whether it would affect us in this community 
or any other community for that matter around America. My beloved brothers and sisters, the time and space in which we are living in, there is no doubt in the mind of anybody, there should not be any doubt that the times are changing. That we are the subject of criticism. That Islam has been put on the pedestal of criticism. That there are people who are against us. Absolutely no question. There has been other incidences or much has been burnt or being attacked or individuals or somebody is saying nasty things on the street. Today, I stand before you and I put, ask you, let's put our minds together and analyze the situation and see what we can do as a community. Let's put our mind together because this is what I, I would suggest. So, what has happened is, as I described in the incident, there were 17 young people who decided to walk at 3 or 3.30 in the morning. We all know, I know when I was growing up, my parents would not let us, and we were only boys, would not let us out of the home after dark. except to go to the masjid, except just for the prayer, not for, to the restaurant, not for walking, not for anything else. Our young people, they love to take risks. They do. This is the mentality of our young people. Look at what they're watching. Look at the video games that they're playing, whether it's Minecraft, or whether it's uh, whatever Call of Duty, I don't know, even know, all of that promote violence. Risk taking, so that's number one. Second, the false sense of security. Young people feel they're invincible. There were 17 of them in a, going in a group. Of course, it is power when they are going together. But when this young, uh, that madman drove his car over the curb towards these young people, all of them ran away. Except for this unfortunate girl who got tangled in her abaya. And she paid the ultimate price. So the false sense of security. The third, why did it happen? We have all heard of peer pressure. In school, if you do not do something, you're not cool. You're not this, you're not that. And so peer pressure. And it happens all across the nation. Can I ask everybody to move forward? I see brothers coming in, please. Come close, inshallah, um, if you can, please. This is another incident that happened. Recently, when the executive order was put through uh, for travel ban and whatnot on, on, on Muslim, some of the Muslim countries, I personally, because I'm involved in the community, I personally heard from so many people, I have nothing to hide. Why should I hide anything? Why not? Why not? I'm an American citizen. My beloved brothers and sisters, we need, just like Americans teaches us, we need to protect what our rights are. Don't forfeit your rights, especially when you're traveling on the border in front of your children. Don't, because that's critical. And then the last thing, just to analyze is, Masjid, they, when the parents drop their children in the masjid and they think they are on the safe place. It is. Masjid is a safe place. 
But young people, until un unless they are supervised or until unless they have the wisdom to do the right thing. How many of us, like we had in, uh, uh, just two days after this unfortunate in incident, we had an iftar in one of the masjid. And the parents were inside eating iftar and the young kids were where? Outside in the parking lot, playing, taking risks going behind the bushes, going in the dark area, taking risks again. They were in the masjid then. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, it's good, nothing happened. But I felt that there was something missing. My beloved brothers and sisters, let's look at what the Quran says. And I would like to share that with you. In Surah Yusuf, when Hazrat Yaqub, may Allah be pleased with him, Hazrat Yaqub, alayhi salatu wasalam, his sons were going to Egypt, to the city, during the drought. There were 11 of them. What did he say to them? Enter into the city through different gates so that you are not identified, so that you are safe, because it was a time of drought. Everybody was, and they, they knew that they were coming in from outside. Safety. Today is the beloved day of, of uh, Juma. You know, we love this day of Juma, the best day of the week because we are blessed to come together in one jama'ah and bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one unit, one ummah. In this day, we are asked to read Surah Al-Kahf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the young people of Kahf or the cave. When they woke up, they said, we are hungry. They assigned one of them because they thought they were sleeping only for a few hours. They didn't know. So they said, one of you go and bring something good food. But also, what did they say? They warned him. Don't display yourself so that you'll be caught. Our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he was traveling from Makkah to Medina for Hijrah, he was blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he, was, he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his protector. But did he not play it safe? Instead of going straight, taking the shortest route, he went first to the opposite direction and stayed in a cave for a few days. Safety, once again. So why not us look at our situation and realize where we are and understand where, where, where the country is going and understand and protect ourselves. We need to talk within ourselves, our leaders, our youth leaders, our imams, our community, parents, youth, everybody, men and women, because it can happen anywhere at any time. Inshallah, when I come back, I would like to suggest certain steps to you, inshallah, before I conclude. Let's all pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I request you to pray for yourself, for your family, and also for this young lady who passed away, the people who are victim either in Iraq or in Syria or Afghanistan or anywhere in the world. Subhanakallamma bihamdika, nastaghfiruka, wa natubu
الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم أما بعد I work for Muslim Family Services and on behalf of Muslim Family Services I stand before you to thank you thank this community this masjid for supporting us I think it is time for us as an organization to give back to our community at large. And this is what I recommend. Number one, as I said before, the responsibility is not with the community at large, it's not with the imams, it's not but together with all of us, starting from the parents. The parents, they have to ask yourself, do you communicate with your young people? Do you talk to them? Prophet Yusuf in his Surah Yusuf, right in the beginning, he told his dream to who? To his father. Isn't that an example for us? Isn't that an example? How many fathers here really have that kind of communication with your sons or with your daughters? That's the question you need to ask yourself. And there is a process, there's a way. Now, this particular case I talked about that young girl, Sister Nabra, who passed away, may Allah bless her and her family. Her family is suffering, and I know it because I was part of that community, as I said in the beginning of my khutbah, that I'm following this case very, very closely. I was actually the administrator of that masjid for four years. So I know inside and out. It's not only can you imagine what those young 16 other young kids are going through? The boy who throw, threw that drink on that person's car, he's blaming himself. They do not want to come to the masjid anymore. The young people. Many of them are on suicide list, suicide watch, many of them. The girls, they said, how come we didn't save our friend? All of them, the 16 of them. How about the community at large? How about others? So what do I suggest? And my time is very short, so I'm going to be jump to it and very quickly I'm suggesting two things right now. One is from us. We as Muslim Family Services have prepared three workshops based on this case. Number one is your personal safety workshop. Your personal safety workshop. It's very important to you, for you to get to know how to protect yourself, whether in the situation like this or other one. Otherwise, you might be in a restaurant, you might be anywhere. So that's number one. Second one is parenting. Parenting, dealing with the teenage especially. By the way, I must clarify that for those parents who are not communicating with your child who is a teenager, it's already too late for some of them. Many of us, we do not know how to communicate. You know, these days you think, you talk to the, your child and uh, they should respond to you. Do they? Do we know how to text? Because that's how they communicate. Or Snapchat, or Facebook, that is where the pulse of the young people are. So we deal with all of that. And the third thing is anger, anger prevention, and, and you know, uh, stress. 
We, I'm also suggesting that we should create every community and let this community, inshallah, lead the way of being creating a crisis management team. If we create a crisis management team, inshallah, we can multiply and we can set the example and go. Let's pray together, inshallah. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt. Wa afina fi man afayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa barik lana fi ma atayt. Wa qna sharam ma qadayt. Wa inna ka taqtiba la yukta alayt. Inna hu la yazillu ma wa alayt. Wa la yaizu man adayt. Tabarak ta rabna wa ta'alayt. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyil kareem. Allahumma khfirlana wa mu'mineena wal mu'minat. Wal muslimina wal muslimat. Wa alli bayna qulubihim. Wa aslih zaata baynihim. Wa ansurum ala aduwek aduwehim. Allahumma ansur islam awal muslimin. Allahumma ansur islam awal muslimin. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasanatan wa fi l'akhirati hasanatan wa qana zabinar. Rabbana la tuzi qulubana ba'da id hazaytana wa habla la min ladunka rahma inna kat wahab. Rabbana la tuakhisna nasina akhtana. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamalta wa la lezina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammil la ma la tuakhata lana bih. Wa afu anna wa akhfir lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana fassuna ala al-kamil kafirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim. وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك أنت مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك أنت مجيد وأقم الصلاة